Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm an emergency critical care veterinary specialist and a Cornell 1997 graduate. Now, I'm really excited to be able to give this talk for the hackathon. And I will say, if you ask my class, if I was going to be a small business owner or I'd have a tech company, there's no way they would have picked me for this. So some of the goals that I wanted to talk about briefly were when it comes to having an idea, a lot of people have great ideas. It's just very few who take it to the next level. So what I wanted to do was really just leave you guys with some encouragement encouragement and a couple of hacks of how I came up with the idea of my small business. So my company is called Vet Girl. We are actually the number one online veterinary continuing education company. And I will also say that I was a C student at Cornell and I never would have thought that I'd have this small business, but I also wasn't a great test taker. And when I was studying for my boards in emergency and critical care, that's the equivalent of a bar exam for lawyers, I was actually doing this at University of Pennsylvania during my emergency critical care residency. Well, I needed help studying. I was studying 13 hours a day. I just wanted to go for a trail run, but I wish there was some way I could have learned through my Walkman, which is this old device you guys probably don't even know about. I wanted someone to read me a veterinary journal so I could learn and run at the same time. Well, technology just didn't exist back in 2003 when I was taking my boards. Well, lo and behold, I sat for my American Board of Toxicology boards in 2012. And at this time, again, I said, I just want someone to read me a veterinary article or a veterinary chapter so I could run or go for a trail walk at the same time as I was studying. And that's when I teamed up with Dr. Garrett Pachtinger, who's a fellow veterinary emergency critical care specialist. Now, Garrett was actually a fourth year veterinary student when I was finishing my emergency critical care residency at Penn. And he was so tech savvy, he was always sinking people's palm pilots. And so I teamed up with him because he was super tech savvy. Now, I will say when you're starting a new company, it takes a lot of personal investment. It takes a lot of sweat equity and you have to find the right business partner. Well, as a result, I picked Garrett and we both teamed up. We split Beck Girl completely together and we decided, you know what? We're going to invest $10,000 each. If it flops after that, we can walk away, but at least we gave it a good try. Well, what we wanted to do was we wanted to be able to provide clinically relevant, practical, cutting edge veterinary continuing education. And we knew that there was a void in the veterinary continuing education space. Most people travel to veterinary conferences to learn. And so we were one of the first companies to be able to provide this from the comforts of home online. We grew the idea and again, we took it to the next level and we wanted to be able to provide continuing education for veterinary professionals who were too busy or had what we call time poverty and wanted to be able to provide that clinically relevant continuing education from home. We did this through podcasts, webinars, videos, and what we call real life rounds. Now I named the company Vet Girl. And at that time, I named it Vet Girl because I'm female. The veterinary profession is 70 to 90% female. And I also named it after one of my favorite podcasts, Grammar Girl. Since then, the term girl has become extremely popular. It's money girl, grammar girl, skinny girl, and again, very popular in pop culture. And let's be honest, if I named my company veterinarycontinuingeducation.com, no one would have heard of it. So it was a catchy name. Now, this is the first beta version of our website. Um, it was something that we just created on WordPress. It was actually an ultimate Frisbee teammate who helped me with this website. And again, I was able to get this company off the ground, thankfully, because of a couple of colleagues, a couple of friends, and some multiple independent contractors that we had. So again, our goal with Vet Girl was to be a tech savvy way for veterinary professionals to be able to obtain their continuing education. When we first started, we were a subscription based service at $199 a year, and we started back in 2013. 
In the past seven years, we've grown to be the number one online CE provider, and we've raised our price to $249 a year because we've grown from giving 12 hours of continuing education a year to over 100 hours a year in five different topics, small animal, large animal, leadership, veterinary technician, ton of information that you can find. Now, there was a meme that was floating around in the social media veterinary world, started comp company for veterinary CE on computers and mobile devices, didn't have cable TV until last week. And I will say, I still don't own an iPad. So again, that's why I teamed up with Garrett because he's super tech savvy, but I saw that initial void. Since then, we've grown tremendously. We've updated and rebuilt our website multiple times. And I can encourage you, the biggest lesson that I learned is when it comes to small businesses, everyone has an awesome idea. It's just a small portion that take it to the next level to dream big. So the first thing is pick a name for your small business that represents you. I'm female. I'm a veterinarian. And that picture sort of looks like me. You want to make sure it's unambiguous, ideally alphabetical, short, and that the domain name is available. Now, I didn't know any of this information until I already picked the name Vet Girl. I will also say when we picked our logo, the hints that I received was pick one that represents you. Pick a color that doesn't incite danger. Pick one that has large or small scaling for, for marketing and that has branding capacity. Well, I didn't follow any of those rules. But if you look at companies like Target, Target doesn't represent any of those rules and has the dangerous color red too. So when in doubt, just know you can break some rules when it comes to marketing and releasing your small business. Now, I will say the veterinary medicine field is extremely small and very relational. So the way that Garrett and I grew Vet Girl was really by relationship. It was by telling people about our services. It was by lecturing throughout the country. It was through marketing. And we always told our social media following that if we obtained sponsorship for an event, that we would always give back to the veterinary community and give that free to the veterinary community. So again, we started with webinars and podcasts. We tried growing it with marketing and helping get our logo out there. And I will say that we spent way too much money, tens of thousands of dollars at marketing t-shirts and water bottles, postcards, pens, chapsticks. We actually created something called a CPR wheel that is a dosing guide for the life-saving drugs, epinephrine and atropine. And we think we've infiltrated most veterinary clinics with this, but this was designed to be a life-saving wheel that is in the center of the crash cart in the veterinary hospital. And again, really designed to get our brand out there. We even created a cookbook thanks to the ideas of lots of recipes from friends and colleagues. Now, the one small business tip I also learned was to give back. And in 2015, we decided to release our podcast free on Apple Podcasts. Previously, you had to subscribe to them. You had to pay $99 to get our podcast. And that's because one podcast takes us about four hours of work. Well, we finally decided to release these free in 2015, and we're excited that they've been released over or downloaded over 3.7 million times. And that's just on iOS devices. Now, while podcasts are a ton of work for both Garrett and myself, it was a great way of being able to get our brand out there. And we're excited excited to say that we are consistently the number one veterinary podcast that's downloaded. We also provide a small percentage of our how to do videos on YouTube. And this is, a, is designed to help veterinary professionals know or learn how to do certain procedures. Well, I'll also say that we only ever invested $250 into social media in terms of costs. We paid $250 to get our Facebook group up to 1,000 people. And since then, it's one of the largest social media groups out there in veterinary medicine, about 200,000. We have over 103,000 followers on Instagram, and we never paid a dime for it. It was just providing interesting content, fun content, and educational content. Now, what did I learn? I learned you're going to hit some resistance along the way. We hit resistance with a name. People were like, I'm offended by the term girl. Well, 
you got to trust your gut instinct. While I got a little bit of pushback for the name, again, no one would have heard of my company if I named it veterinaryonlinecontinuingeducation.com. So Vet Girl represents me. It represents what we do. It represents the target that we're aiming for, which is Gen X or millennial or people who expect to learn through Zoom conferences or online. We hit resistance with the price. $199 is nothing, but I also know my peeps. I know my veterinary people. I know my veterinary colleagues. They're extremely frugal. So we knew that we were going to hit some initial resistance and that it would take years to break the barrier. And as a result, we added more value add. We added more and more continuing education content, more videos. Um, so again, these are some of the biggest lessons that I've learned. I'm also going to say stick with your goal and mission. If you know you want to do one or two things, stick with that. You can't do all things perfectly. So pick one or two things that you really want to focus on. Most importantly, don't wait until it's perfect to release it. You always want to release things earlier. And we have to get over our fear of failure or making it perfect. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to have a version two or a beta one. Roll with it. The sooner you can get it out, the sooner Google Analytics can pick it up, um, the sooner you can do it. So when in doubt, not to borrow Nike's logo, but just do it. Okay. I know you guys are going to have some incredible ideas. I so wish I was in Ithaca right now. It's my favorite place in the world to go back and visit. And hopefully I'll be there in future years uh, under safer non-COVID situations. But enjoy the brainstorming, team up, and again, learn from my small business hacks. I hope that helps you. And again, just wanted to tell you, I never would have thought that I would have a small business or a tech company, but if I can do it, you guys can do it. Good luck. Mm -hmm.